Hello and welcome to an episode of Historically Marked. I am Jason and this is another Cemeteries Edition. Now I am at Oak Ridge Cemetery in Springfield, Illinois and I did a video on this almost three years ago and now I'm back and so instead of focusing on Abraham Lincoln I might as well show you some other notable graves here because yes this is the most visited non-military or, or sorry non-national cemetery here in the United States. Many people from all around the world as well as the United States make their trek here to visit Lincoln's tomb and of course I've been there but I'm going to show you some other notable graves that are interred here in the cemetery including um, one of the most powerful labor union leaders in America. There's also a president's daughter and no it's not Lincoln's. Um, I'll show you the only governor of the Illinois Territory and a couple and maybe two or three um, Illinois governors here and they're all interesting people and some have markers so I'm gonna go ahead and show you around so come with me on this tour here we go all right so right over there well behind those trees is Lincoln's tomb and I'm gonna go approach this grave here actually I'm gonna check out the one on the left real quick it looks very interesting because it's a bench same can be said for any kind of grave slash bench but let's see who is this guy William A Northcott Head Consul, or Consul, sorry, of Modern Woodmen of America from 1890 to 1903, a statesman, patriot, fraternalist, erected by that society in grateful appreciation of his illustrious, illustrious services for society. And let's see what it says over here. He was as friendly as a wayside well, 1854 to 1917. All right, so here's a notable person, Shelby Moore Cullum. I hope I'm saying that right. Served 60 years in public office, including two terms as Illinois governor and 30 years as U.S. senator. And this is it right here. I mean, it's not, okay, the arrow's pointing that way. It's actually right here. And it looks like they got some fresh mulch here. Really nice. Shelby Moore Cullum. Born Wayne County, Kentucky, November 22, 1829. Died in Washington, D.C., January 22, 1914. So a little bit more about Mr. Cullum. He was known as Mr. Republican, also the man who looked like Lincoln during his long political career. He moved to Springfield in 1853, where he was admitted to the bar and elected city attorney in 1855. So... Moving on, his most significant work as a senator was pushing through the Interstate Commerce Act of 1887, which created the Interstate Commerce Commission, or the ICC, in an attempt to regulate their railroad and oil industries. He was also considered several times for the presidency. So, again, yeah, he spent a very a nice amount of time in public office, be it as con congressman or house speaker... State House Representatives, yeah, you name it. <laughs> and he died after he retired. Rest in peace, Mr. Colum. You know, in my previous video for Oak Ridge Cemetery, that thing went off too. And here's another historical figure for you. John Pope Cook lived from June 12th, 1825 died on October 12th, 1910. Now he was born in, Bever I'm sorry, he was born in Belleville, Illinois, and he died in Ransom, Michigan. He was a Civil War Union Brigadier General, the son of Daniel P. Cook, who was the second congressman from Illinois and the man for whom Cook County in Illinois was named, you know, Chicago, in 1855. And he was elected mayor of Springfield and the following year, sheriff of Sangamon County. After the Confederate bombardment of Fort Sumter in April 16, I'm sorry, April 1861, he raised a company of troops and was commissioned Colonel of the 7th Illinois Volunteer Infantry. He was promoted to Brigadier General, U.S. Volunteers in 1864. Rest in peace, Mr. Cook. Here's one for Edward Lewis Baker, who lived from 1829 to 1897. Newspaper editor who became U.S. Consul in Buenos Aires, Argentina. The bronze tablet on his grave was donated by Argentinian friends. We shall check this out. 
And it's right in front of Ninian Edwards grave, but which I'll show you in just a minute. But I thought I'd show you the Baker one as well. To the memory of Edward Lewis Baker for 23 years, Consul of the United States of America at Buenos Aires. Born Kaskaskia, Illinois, June 3rd, 1829. Died Buenos Aires, July 8th, 1897. This tablet has been inscribed by his friends in the Argentine Republic as a tribute to his abilities as an official of his government and a token of their appreciation of his kindly and generous nature. Very neat. And right here is Ninian Edwards. Now in grade school, growing up in Edwardsville, Illinois, and graduating from the school district, we learned so much about this man. He is the namesake of Edwardsville, Illinois, among many other things. And there is a plaque in front of his grave, which I'll read most of. The only governor of the Illinois Territory from 1809 to 1818, the United States Senator for the State of Illinois from 1818 to 1824, the governor of the State of Illinois from 1826 to 1830. Born in 1775 in Maryland, his father Benjamin was a member of the Maryland House of Delegates and also served in the United States House of Representatives. Edwards attended Dickinson College in Pennsylvania, studying medicine and graduating in 1792. He then studied law and was admitted to the bar. He then migrated to Kentucky in 1794, serving in the Kentucky House of Representatives. As a circuit court judge, a presidential elector, chief justice of the Court of Appeals, and attained the rank of major in the Kentucky State Militia. In 1803, Edwards married Elvira Lane, a relative from Maryland. He was appointed governor of the Illinois Territory by President James Madison. He oversaw a transition to statehood. During the War of 1812, he served as commander-in-chief of the Territorial Militia. Upon statehood, Edwards resigned as governor and was elected as a United States Senator on the first ballot. All right. So he, in 1826, he ran for governor, won with 49.5% of the vote. In 1827, Edwards ordered militia troops north to participate in the Winnebago or Ho-Chunk War. The show of force by the militia convinced the Ho-Chunk to surrender. Edwards' term as governor ended in 1830. He retired to Belleville, Illinois, donating his time and giving financial support to the medical care of local residents. In 1833, a cholera epidemic hit Belleville. He devotedly stayed in Belleville to care for victims but caught the disease and died. He was originally buried in Belleville and he was reinterred at Hutchinson Cemetery in Springfield in 1855 and later moved here. Placed here in 2012. Check out these little plaques here too. So I did not know he was originally buried in Belleville. Very strange. Now I featured him in a couple of videos in the past. One was in Belleville on their Walk of Fame. I'll put the links in the description box. There was also controversy um, years ago in recent years that there is a stat there's a statue of him in Edwardsville near downtown Edwardsville, Illinois. And so there were some people, mostly young people, who wanted to take down the statue. But they did take it off a pedestal. So, but the statue is still up. I did the video about three years ago. I'll put that in the description box too. If you want to learn more about the whole controversy of it, you know, just kind of Google it. But I'm going to check this out because not many people in my hometown even know that he is buried here in Springfield. But rest in peace, Ninian Edwards. Here is the final resting place of Nellie Grant Jones. Her full name is actually Ellen Renshaw grant jones but she was known as nelly she is the daughter of u.s grant or ulysses s grant and julia and she was born july 4th 1855 in st louis missouri she died in chicago in 1922 so no surprise she was an american social figure she was the third child and only daughter of the former president and the first lady ulysses and julia grant she married english army officer Charles Frederick Sartoris at the White House in D.C. in 1874 during Grant's second administration. The couple lived in England and had four children before divorcing in 1893. He later died that year and left her a vast fortune, fortune. And she returned to the United States and eventually married Frank Hatch Jones, who is buried right here. 
and and he was a prominent Chicago Illinois banker and the fam his family was from Springfield and they married in 1912 she was immortalized in a poem titled Nellie that was written by St. Louis and Eugene Field at the time of her father's death here you go Nellie Grant Jones all right now we're going to a different section of the cemetery with uh, Nicholas Vachel Lindsay from 1879 to 1931 when he lived poet who strove to bring verse out of the classroom and into the streets and it looks like some people have coins on here so if you're wondering what some of his works are well I do have a list of selected works in front of me one of them being Abraham Lincoln walks at midnight the dandelion in praise of Johnny Appleseed the Golden Book of Springfield, The Eagle That Is Forgotten, Why I Voted the Socialist Ticket, many more. But like I said, I mean, he considered a, he was considered a founder of modern singing poetry, as he referred to it, in which uh, verses are meant to be sung or chanted. Now we're going to go towards William H. Bissell, who lived from 1811 to 1860, and pretty much sums up only his first. First Republican, first Catholic, first disabled governor of Illinois, first governor to die in office. Okay? That big monument over there, um, it's actually sitting atop what is known as Bissell Mound. I'll come over there in just a second. But I'll go ahead and uh, tell you a little bit more about Mr. Bissell. He was a Mexican War United States Army officer. He was a U.S. congressman. And yes, he was the 11th Illinois governor. And he was actually born near Cooperstown, New York. That's a kind of a surprise. <laughs> but he practiced medicine after graduating from Philadelphia, some sort of college or university there. But and then he studied law. But then he served as a, as a colonel of the 2nd Illinois Volunteers in the Mexican War. And then served in Congress from 1840 to 1855. And then he was originally a member of the Democratic Party, but in 1858, he became the first Republican governor of Illinois, serving until his death in office. And again, this is known as Bissell Mound. If you notice, it's kind of, the ground kind of gets higher. But this monument here was put up by the state. And it's a little bit hard to read patriot statesman hero i'm not talking about that part i'm talking about this part right here so it says here the 10th governor of the state of illinois born april 25th 1811 died in office march 13th 1860 but it's still in great shape if you ask me i mean there's the eagle on top i want to see what else is around this while i'm here yeah this part unfortunately is has been faded like uh i don't know if there's some sort of scripture writing or something i don't know and just a few steps away is the resting place of colonel samuel n shoop he was a civil war union general brigadier general sorry when the civil war began shoop raised a company which became company e of the 114th illinois infantry he was elected and commissioned captain upon his organization and was promoted through different grades to eventually become commanding colonel of the regiment from May 11th, 1865 until it was mustered out and discharged on August 15th, 1865. On July 17th, 1865, it was ordered to Vicksburg, Mississippi to be mustered out. The unit was mustered into service on September 18th, 1862 at Camp Butler, which is not too far from here. They were ordered to Memphis, Tennessee, where they did picket duty for three months. In late November of 1862, they started on the Tallahatchie campaign as part of the 1st Brigade of General Landman's Division. They participated in the battles of Jackson, Wyatt, Guntown, and Tupelo in Mississippi. The unit also pursued General Sterling Price from the Arkansas border to Kansas City and back to St. Louis. They also participated in the surrender of Mobile, Alabama in the early May of 1865. After the war, Shoup became a farmer and county sheriff in Sangamon County, Illinois, which, of course, is here. This is Alice's wife. 
Rest in peace to both. Here's another marker right here. Right in front of his. And then Alice as well. Next up is William H. Herndon, who lived from 1818 to 1891, and he was Abraham Lincoln's law partner and biographer. Going this way. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and try to find Mr. Herndon's grave site, and I think I see it. Yep, there it is. William H. Herndon, Abraham Lincoln's law partner for 17 years. The struggles of this age and succeeding ages for God and man, religion, humanity, and liberty with all their complex and grand relations, may they triumph and conquer forever is my ardent wish and most fervent soul prayer that he said that on February 23rd, 1858. So William was married twice and I believe both of his wives are buried here because their names are mentioned and he had at least 10 kids altogether and one of his sons is buried right here. I imagine he was probably 20 or 21 when he passed away. William Miles Herndon, yeah, Miles Herndon, sorry lived from 1870 to 1891 but his first wife was Mary and she passed away in 1861 and then on the other side is his wife Anna who he married in 1862 she passed away in 1893 so as far as William I mean obviously yes he is remembered best as the law partner of Abraham Lincoln when he practiced law in Springfield but as far as his background, I mean, he was the oldest son of a businessman. His family moved to Macon County, Illinois in 1820, and the following year they relocated to Sangamon County, which of course is here, and eventually settled in German Prairie, which is near here in Springfield. His father built the first tavern in here in Springfield, served in the Illinois State Senate, and was instrumental in having the state capital moved to Springfield from Vandalia. From 1836 to 1837, he attended Illinois College in Jacksonville and returned to Springfield and clerked at the Joshua Speed Store when he often engaged in debates, discussions, and poetry readings with Abraham Lincoln. In 1840, he began studying law at the Logan and Lincoln Law Practice, and in 1844, he passed the bar examination and began practicing law with Lincoln. 1854, he was elected mayor of Springfield, Illinois. 1856, he was one of the original organizing men of the fledging Republican Party after the dissolution of the Whig Party. So even though he had a good friendship and partnership with Abraham Lincoln, he was never invited to Lincoln's home for dinner due to his contentious relationship with his wife, Mary Todd Lincoln. Ooh, <laughs> I did not know that. He also admitted that his frustration with Lincoln's overly permissive part parenting of his two younger sons, William and Ted, who re he recalled as undisciplined and disruptive brats in the law offices, and that caused some harsh words during their partnership. Wow. But his final meeting with Lincoln happened in 1862 when he visited D.C. And then after Lincoln was assassinated in 1865, he began to collect stories of Lincoln's life from those who knew him and he became a biographer but he was portrayed in many movies uh, like jason robards portrayed him in i'm sorry jason robards senior portrayed him in the dw griffith abraham lincoln movie in 1930. there was also keith carradine portrayed him in the movie lincoln which was came out in 1992. i mean there's other ones too but just a little background on William H. Herndon, rest in peace. See, I mean like, friendship can be defined in many ways overall, and sometimes there's some good and sometimes there's some bad moments that, I don't know, <laughs> behind closed doors I guess maybe is the best way of putting it. All right, on to the next notable grave. Before I show you the last grave, I'd like to show you some of the war and veterans memorials at Oak Ridge. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial, Korean War Memorial, and the World War II Veterans Memorial. And lastly, the final resting place of John L. Lewis, 
and they've got it clearly marked here 1880 to 1969 american labor leader president of the umwa i'll tell you more about that and here it is not this that says lewis but the one behind it a lot of lewis's are buried here and here is the final resting place of one of the most powerful men in the United States at one time. So I did a, a previous video on him in Panama, Illinois, when his family moved from there, moved there from Iowa. But as far as his legacy, yes, he was an American labor leader. He was the president of the United Mine Workers of America, or the UMWA, from 1920 to 1960. Major part of the history of American coal industry. He also founded the Congress of Industrial Organizations in 1938, also known as the CIO. And he also organized other industrial unions such as the United Auto Workers and the United Steel Workers of America. And after a long strike in 1946, the UMWA negotiated the nation's first health and retirement program for workers. And he was a supporter of FDR for president, but when he went against the German Nazi party, he encouraged those in his unions to vote against FDR. Like I said, he had a lot of power. I mean, he was feared by politicians. But in 1964, Lyndon Johnson, president at the time, presented him with a pres the President Medal of Freedom. And this, again, this is his final resting place. John L. Lewis. All right, thanks so much for tuning into this episode of Historically Marked. I am Jason in Oak Ridge Cemetery in Springfield, Illinois. I hope you learned some more history about some of the famous burials here in this area. So tune in for some more cemetery videos and as well as other historical marker videos on this channel. All right, I am Jason, signing off.